Aquarius. What's going on, baby? It is Scorpion Red Tarot. I am back at it again. One time for the one time. Yes, indeed. To let you guys know what energies are surrounding you for the month of August 2004. <laughs> excuse me 19 thank you guys so much for liking sharing and subscribing for clicking this video i want to give a shout out to everyone who has been sending love light and um support to the page we got some new decks of course you guys are amazing you guys are amazing 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 every time every month that we start doing the monthlies i always get new decks that you guys send me thank you guys for supporting my page so much especially my aquarius i love you know we have too much fun in aquarius reading look mm -mm. look how they do you look how they do you they thought they knew you aquarius did they tell you you unicorn puss out here cartwheeling all over the universe girl yes they went ahead and sent us some unicorn goddamn playing card decks y'all already know how we roll all right we got the game of Thrones playing card deck y'all already know how we doing it we have here the mystic murder all right yoga tarot deck you guys i've been using this for my personal let me just show y'all this deck real quick it gives uh yoga poses and it gives inspiration as you can see this one is the raised leg pose it says i know i am one with the universe when i focus universal energy flows through me all right so it gives you a little yoga pose and it gives you some words of inspiration so i want to give a big shout out to um all of my followers that send love light and support through the amazon wish list and through the uh paypal link oh also and then we also got the souls journeys deck here as well so i haven't used this one yet so y'all know it's more blessings more goodness soon to come if these videos um resonate and you guys want to send some love to the page of course check my about tab um it'll have my paypal information if you want to send a dollar or two it has my amazon wish list if you guys want to check out a few things on there and if you want to send love that way if you guys want to book a personal private reading with scorpion rest tarot only thing you have to do is click the about tab there's two links on there that you guys need to pay attention to, which is my booking that says Scorpion Red Tarot as Simply Book Me. Again, Scorpion Red Tarot as Simply Book Me. Go ahead and click that link. Select the type of reading that you want. If you guys want to add on, um, meaning if you don't want to get on camera to record, I mean to do the video um, session with me, if you just want a private uh, direct upload recording where you can send me your question pertaining to the type of um, reading that you purchase you can make that uh option available to you uh by selecting the type of reading that you want and then there's a, also an, um, an add-on in the uh description menu box it says direct upload slash uh, recap video so again you can use that add-on if you don't want to get on camera with me for the video chat if you just want to purchase your reading with the add-on and send me the question you can use that for that and then you also can use that add-on if you want to record your video session um and have it uploaded privately to youtube so that you can go back and watch it so you can use that add-on for a video recap if you want to record your video uh reading session and or if you don't want to get on camera to and you want me to record your video session privately and upload it to YouTube. I, I feel like that was hella fucking confusing. If you all have any questions, give me a, give me an email. Shoot me an email at scorpionreds at gmail.com. Um, if you don't have an Instagram, what you need to do is download Google Hangouts. And you can send me a message on Google Hangouts. Only thing you need is my email, which is scorpionreds at gmail.com. If you were doing the video chat, um, like I said, book the link with me. You book with me first, and then you link up with me either on Google Hangouts or on Instagram. The Instagram link is directly under the booking. So just click that after you book your reading and send me a message and say, hey, Rez, this is so-and-so. Um, I book with you on this and that a day. Typically, the day that you book me is normally the day that you get your reading so make sure that you don't wait until the day of the selected um day that you selected for your reading as soon as you book your reading make sure that you send me a message because nine times out of ten if i can knock you out on that same day i'm going to get you your reading that same day so make sure after you book that you send me a message okay i will on google hangouts again using my email which is scorpionreds at gmail.com and or on instagram and it will be good to go here from there and again if 
all of that was fucking confusing because I think I confused my goddamn self because I said it differently than how I normally say it. Y'all just email me. <laughs> Y'all just email me again at scorpionrays at gmail.com. Let's get into the guidance for my Aquariuses. Father God, thank you so much for bringing us here. Thank you so much for delivering us to love, light, and prosperity this morning, Father God. Thank you for waking us up with our head held high, Father God. Thank you so much for all of the inspiration and the glory because they don't know our story, Father God. We are uplifting ourselves to be able to walk forth in our vision. We have a brand new vision for the way that we want our life to go and how we want the rest of 2019 to play out. Father God, please be with us and help us be prepared to be able to pull off everything it is that we are destined to do in this year. We thank you again for all your blessing and abundant light. Please give the sign of Aquarius guidance for the month of August 2019. Thank you again for all of the blessings and lessons in the past, present, and future. Please give us guidance for our Aquarius. Thank you so much. Let's get to this. All right. guidance for my Aquarius for August. My Aquarius. Leaving them hoes to Lars. Who are you leaving to Lars today, Aquarius? Let's see how we doing. Let's see if we've been being good. Oh, Jesus. That is a lot, bitch. That's a fucking lot. Alright, so it looks like some storms is brewing. Looks like a storm is brewing. Feel like somebody else got this. See, here go Aquarius on their bullshit. <laughs> here go Aquarius on their bullshit. Listen, the storm angel, you are having a conflict with someone. Y'all are not seeing the eye to eye. Y'all have two totally different principles about the way that you want to live versus what they want to live. And you couldn't give a shit about what the fuck they talking about. Goddamn. You feel a stifled, stifled, and bored with this motherfucker. Okay? You're boring. Okay? You're born, and I'm ignoring anything that you got to say. You're born, and I'm ignoring anything you got to say. You're growing gray hairs. You are tired of feeling stuck and feeling misled. You feel like you were misled, like someone. Listen, like you know how you get them call, uh, them calls on your phone. Hey, do you are you a mother? Do you have kids? Would you like an all exclusive pack to Disney World? And they talk you all this wonderful shit, and they make it like, oh, you gonna have access to four different parks and two or three different pools, and you're all inclusive, and you get to stay there seven days and seven nights, and blah blah blah. And only thing it is is like a thousand dollars for a family of four, and you like, oh my god, really? Cause you know good and goddamn well a package like that is like eighteen hundred to goddamn two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars, okay? Disney World, okay? And they talk about oh that you can stay on the property and all that stuff for a thousand dollars. It sounds like some bullshit, honey. Listen, these people fed, fed you propaganda and lies, honey. Propaganda and lies, and you're like, honey, we don't roll like that around here, honey. If I tell you. That what I got, if it look good, it tastes good, it smell good, bitch is good, bitch is good. Do you understand right here? This is the sewer man. Your sensuality is beautiful, honey. Like you told them. Honey, I told you what I got is good and did I deny you? Didn't I supply you? Baby, don't play with me. Don't play with me. You were offered something that did not come out in the way that you expected to be. You got there and you realized it was propaganda and lies. And you realized I am bored. I have other things better to do. You just conned the fuck out of me, out of my money. And at the end of the day, I'm too beautiful to sit here. So that's like, okay. You done gave them the $1,000 and you took you and your family on down to Florida. You thought you was going to Disney World and you got there and realized that they had you sitting in the motherfucking sewer, bitch. This ain't even Disney World. You ain't even have access to Disney World, bitch. They done straight conned you, okay? Con. But at the end of the day, you like, honey, con. Con. I'm already in motherfucking Florida. Look, tuh. I'm already in Florida. I'm about to make the best of this because I'm too beautiful to be sitting up here, you know, feeling calm and feeling misled 
and you know, and I damn sure not about to be sitting out here stuck with nothing to do. We already here. I'm about to make the best of it, okay? I'm about to go to the beach, okay? I got enough money to get me another hotel from somewhere else, and we gonna figure out that you know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I really do feel like you were dealing with someone that fed you something. Yeah, the three of spears. The three of spears. You're having a delay. You're waiting for your ships to come in. You're waiting for your ships to come in so that you can leave. So I really do feel like somebody is bored. They felt y'all's lifestyle, the way it was presented to you in the onset. It seemed like y'all had the same beliefs, that y'all had the same wants, that y'all had the same aspiration. But you got into it and quickly found out that y'all really don't. Y'all could have been with each other for about like three years. Three to five years. Okay? And right now, this shit is getting boring. Okay? You want something and I want something different. I'm not about to sit here and grow old hairs with you. Not when my pussy popping and percolating like this, bitch. I'm too, I'm too cute to be sitting up here wasting my goddamn time with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. So, at the end of the day, Aquarius is making movements. I feel like they're waiting on the uh, right time, the appropriate time. But while they're waiting on the white time, the appropriate time, they're growing more and more gray hairs. These storms are getting even more... It's getting even more, uh, uh, I'm about to say torrential. I think that's the right word. Torrential storms. Like, I really do feel like, it, like these storms are getting worse. It's getting worse. And the more and more you sit in there being bored, growing gray hairs, the more and more and more violent these storms are, are getting. And I really do feel like you guys need to move and stop sitting there waiting for your shit to come in. You need to go. You need to get up and go now. Like, that's honestly what I'm getting. Because this is someone that is sitting, waiting for something to happen before they make a move. Or still going over the pros and cons on if I should leave. Leave. The hell you can't stay somewhere with you. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, what is this, the Nine of Swords? Yeah. You feel like you're in a prison. Or this is someone who... You might be waiting for someone to get out of jail. You might be dating someone that's in jail and the more and more that you talk to them, they're like, oh, I'm getting out on this date, I'm getting out on this date. And it keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And it's like the release date feel like it's never going to fucking come. And I feel like you guys are tired of waiting. You guys are tired of waiting. And you feel like your ships has sailed. The ship has sailed on this one, and now you're waiting on another ship so you could go on elsewhere because you're tired of waiting and you want to get out of this mental prison dealing with this person because it's like you've been trying to stick yourself in there as long as you could and do the sentence with this person, but you did not go to jail. You did, and I feel like that is what y'all are sitting up there arguing about. I did not go to jail. You went to jail. You knew what you was doing and this person is saying, but you knew what I was doing and you knew what you were getting into and you started dating me. So what the fuck you going to leave me now? I know that I listen. Me and you just have two different belief styles in this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I knew what you were doing and I knew that there was a possibility that you could go to jail or that you could get caught. You know, and, and like, like the person that you're dealing with may feel like you were only in it while the getting was good. But once they got locked up. Now you bored with it and shit, but when the money was coming in and everything was good, you was, you was, you was, listen, you was rocking out with your cock out. Now, this person has sat up in jail for about like three years. You're tired of holding your life back and you're, you're, you're tired. You're like, I'm, let, I'm watching my life getting wasted away. And it's not that this person does not love. It's not that Aquarius does not love this person or that that person does not love Aquarius. But it's like, I cannot sit here and hold my life back waiting for you to come home. Like this is someone waiting for someone to come home or waiting for someone to get out of jail or waiting for their ships to come in so that they can get out of a fucking jail do you understand what i'm saying waiting for something to change so they can get out of this mental prison of a relationship so if it's not something i really do feel like it is someone that is dating someone that's in jail you understand and i feel like to where it's though in your head before 
you had this big dream and this big vision. Oh, well, when they get out of jail, that we're going to be together and this, this, and that. And you thought that like last year, like a year and a half ago. Like, I feel like you thought that this person was going to be out of jail like a year and a half ago. And they're still in there. And I swear to God, it's not that you don't love this person, but you're watching your life pass you by. Listen, you see those boats? You see how those boats went on? You're watching your life fucking pass you by. You watching everybody else have relationships and every and whole time you're having a stay at home, sitting by the phone waiting for my man to call me from prison or waiting. For, you understand what I'm saying? And this could even be someone that's in a third party relationship. You don't know, listen a third party relationship and your ass been sitting at home in a mental motherfucking prison waiting for this when it, like you can't call this person you gotta wait for this person to call you y'all can't go outside and be seen with each other y'all stuck in the house you understand and it's like to where though the shit was cool in the beginning but now it's like this what this person was offering you you don't even want that shit no more that shit is not you know what i'm saying it's like what this person is offering to you, you have woken up and you're not drunk in love by this situation no more. You're not fulfilled off of the fantasies and lies. You don't care anymore. It does not fulfill you emotionally waiting by the phone for this person to call and you're supposed to jump. You have strength now. And I really do feel like you guys are having the strength to cut this person and this thing, this situation off. This is a situation chip. And it's been your vice. It's been your place to go for sexual comfort, for sexual healing. It's kind of been your addiction. But you know what this five of swords, this is a lose-lose battle. This is a double-edged sword. It don't matter what this person says, what this person tries to do. You know that you're going to lose at the end of the day. You done gave about two to, you done gave about what, two to five years of your life already committed to this. And it just feels like you're just a beautiful mermaid floating around in sewer water. Like as beautiful you as you are, you're floating around in, in, in shit. You in an ain't shit situation. And you're too beautiful for that. I'm not a sewer maid. I'm not a sewer mermaid. Your sensuality is too beautiful to be in a sewer-like situation. In an ain't shit ass situation. The king of spears. You want someone that can take action with you. Someone that can protect you. Can't nobody protect you behind bars. You know what I'm saying? If something, or if this is a third party situation, and something was to happen to you where you needed to call your man or your man, if you're the man and you need to call your woman to have your back, you can't even call her because this bitch is in another situation or this man is in another situation. You got to wait for this person to call you. So it could be some like important shit going on in your life where it's like you needed help. You understand? Know you was in a lose-lose situation where you needed help and you needed protection. And you needed someone that was going to take action, but you couldn't even take action and call them because of the way the situation is. Either they're in prison or they're in prison in a marriage, in a commitment that you look like as you, you're looking at as a prison. Because you can't obtain them. You can't obtain them because they over there working on something at home and not with you, you know? And you're tired of that. I need someone. I'm tired of lose-lose situation. I'm tired of the double-edged sword. I need someone that is not lying, someone that is not cheating, someone that is not manipulated, someone that is not feeding me what you think I want to hear. That's what this person does to you. They tell you what you they think that you want to hear so that you can hold on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Cuz they 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 want to try to feed you propaganda and lies so that you can have strength to hold on and continue fighting for this. And you're just like, "No, cuz I'm just hurting myself." I want someone that's going to take action or someone that's actually physically able to really work on the situation with me and build something. I can't build nothing with you behind bars. 
every time I ask you when you getting out, what's the status of our relationship? When you getting out of this marriage? What's the status of your relationship? You see me waiting, 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 waiting. All your friends and everybody else and got married, they in commitment, they got children and stuff, and you done sat here wasted two, three, four, five, six years of your life waiting for someone to get out of this marriage that ain't never get out of. And you said, you know what? I'm about to get my ass up out of this jail. I'm getting out of this shit. Because it's like, it's a mental prison. It's been like, you stay up all night crying, wishing, dreaming, hoping that things would be different, that things would be better, that this person would come to you, that this person would choose you. You know what I'm saying? That this person would choose you. And now, y'all are having the collision and beliefs. You don't believe in that shit no more. You don't believe in that shit no more. You got strength. You don't believe in that shit no more. And now it's a clash in styles. Because you used to be with that shit before. Your whole attitude has changed. Your whole attitude has motherfucker changed. And this shit is going up in the uproar. You feel me? What's this right here? The nine of spades. I told you. The nine of spades, baby. This right here is a closing and is the end of a cycle that has a lot to do with a lot of hurt feelings. I mean, it could be a lot of arguments. Um, someone's going to end up walking away from this feeling like they've taken a big loss. Like there's loneliness. And that's why I'm saying... It's going to take a lot for Aquarius. I don't even think it's going to take a lot because I feel like Aquarius is done. Aquarius is done. Aquarius is done. I don't think that it's going to take too much for Aquarius to feel like they're better off on their own and they just need to end this and stop wasting their time. But I feel like the reason why this came about is because, yeah, this king of spades. Yeah, this, this, this king of this king of clubs right here. This king of clubs. This one is a hard worker. And this one is always telling you that they're at work. They're always busy. They're always doing something. They don't never have time for you. And you just you just want balance. You want there to be some level of negotiation where you can see the actual results. You know what I'm saying? Like you want someone to choose. You want this person to choose. It's like you're being overshadowed by this person trying to work something out with someone else. Or someone spending so much time at work. Hmm. Let's clarify this. It's like this person is working. It's just not with you. It's just not with you. And things are not working out with you. And I feel like this person is going to kind of be blindsided. You know what I'm saying? This person is going to be blindsided because I feel like this person... I feel like this person is going to be blindsided, especially if this person was in jail. I feel like this person is going to be blindsided. The nine of spades is traditionally called a sadness, adversity, failure, suffering, emotional or physical pain, grief, malice. It's a very unfavorable card. It forebodies tragic events, including accidents, serious injury, serious illness, self-injury, and harm. Or harm to someone, to yourself or another. This could be someone hurting their self due to just feeling the pressure or forced to do something. It could indicate a loss of control, a breakdown of established patterns. It could represent disappointment or heartbroke, karmic debts or obligations and duties to self or others. It's a card of sadness. Do you understand? So like I said... This person has a duty or obligation to someone else. This person has a karmic debt somewhere else. Either they have a karmic debt to society because this person has done something wrong, you know, and they feel like a failure, you know what I'm saying? Because of the way just things, you know, and, 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 and be careful because this card denotes someone possibly threatening because like I, like I told you this is negotiation this is communication this is banter back and forth you guys trying to figure out what's going on and this person could and what was going on and where you stand and this person could possibly threat bodily 
harm to their self, like self-injury. Like they could threaten to hurt themselves, like if you try to leave them. So the two of diamonds, intellectual exchanges, financial partnerships, a small money. And also this could be, especially if someone's in jail, you're trying to tell someone that this shit ain't working. I'm bored with this shit. So if this is someone in jail, you could be breaking up with them and you could be fucking up their money. Do you understand what I'm saying? So again, it says intellectual exchange, financial partnerships, a small money card, a payment made or received, a written correspondence, financial news, a statement or bill, insurance paper, a written report, independence, fertile imagination, a writer, a journalist, financial help or loan, the stomach, food, the kitchen. So I really do feel if this is someone that is in jail, you know, like this person really wants to try to work things out with you. Like they don't want you to go because I want to say like it's going to mess up to them. This communication to them is like financial news. This is like, you know, them receiving a written statement or bill like that you're no longer getting support. You're no longer receiving this financial help. You're no longer receiving this loan. You're no longer getting the help. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this could be someone who was sending someone money to prison. It was sending someone money to prison. And it's, this shit ain't working out. You can't give me nothing from behind bars. Like you just, you can't. You can't. You can't. The king of clubs. Let me show you the king of clubs. Like this person is willing to do and say anything to kind of work things out with you. The king of clubs, a generous, enthusiastic, socially active man. He's an excellent businessman, has an excellent business sense and may own his own business. He may be a successful entrepreneur, a business executive, a college professor, a professional athlete. He could be a male colleague, a business associate, a business associate. He could be the seeker's boss or best friend. He's a reliable friend, a trustworthy advisor, and he's genuinely a married man. Like I told you, this person is either married, this person is either in jail, this person either works a lot because they own their own business and don't have no time for you, and you feel like the third in your relationship is their business, and they don't have no emotions to give to you. You know, you want someone that's put in action. You, are, you know, so... Like I said, but this very much so to be someone in a marriage. I already said that before. Give me guidance on this strength and this five of swords here. Give me guidance on this strength and this five of swords. Thank you. That's too much. The eight of hearts. So the eight of hearts represents like... It represents like a chance to take authority, um, like giving and receiving a chance to do something over. I want to say it means like mutual feelings in regards to love. The seven of hearts. Um, that means being able to like really sit down and analyze if this is best for you. You know what I'm saying? If it's best for you. The joker, faith. Like, you going off of faith. I'm not reading all of this. I'm definitely not reading all of this. I'm not reading all of this. This is too much. This is too much. It's too much. Let me just shuffle one more time. So, what I'm saying is, like, you guys have had complete division in regards to your heart and how you... And what you consider love is. I feel like you guys are loving yourself all over again. Um, and you feel like love is magical and it is, it's created off of what you create. So I believe that you guys are opening up yourself again to a second opportunity, a second chance in love again. And this is a card of movement with that, with that Joker card. That's the full card, you know, um, even though, um, the hound, this is the hound. A lot of people didn't like the Hound at the beginning of the Game of Thrones, but towards the end, like, he was the hero. He saved Arya, you know, and, like, he was, he had enough strength, even though his brother was bigger than him. And they ended up turning him into some, like, fucking monster or something, but he fought to the death. 
He fought to the death. He was brave. He was courageous. And he did a lot of work on himself. He had um, a fear of fire as well. And he ended up fighting around fire, around the flames. And he was able to not allow that to beat him and distract him on his mission. His mission was that he wanted to kill his brother because his brother. So the story in the in the movie in the show is that his brother tried to kill him and threw him in some and threw him in some fly, in, in a furnace in a fireplace. And that's why his skin is all fucked up like that. If you see his skin, his brother threw him in, in some fireplace. In a fly place. And he, he made it his mission that he was going to kill his brother. <laughs> he was going to kill his motherfucker brother. And even though a lot of fucked up shit happened. You know what I'm saying? To him throughout the... Throughout the he still was brave. He still was courageous. And even though it was a double-edged sword. At the end of the whole show... Him killing his brother ended up, he ended up having to sacrifice his life, but he was willing to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess he was getting a second chance at revenge. You're getting a second chance of love. You know what I'm saying? To love again. And you're not just accepting any damn thing. Eight of hearts again. Like I said, this eight with this. Listen, it represents... Mutual feelings, happiness, comfort, sharing with one another, togetherness, working together with one another, a couple, emotional connection, emotional balance, warmth, enjoyment, relaxation, protection. I told you strength. You guys feel protected. You guys are more aware and you know your worth. It's like when you know your worth, that's half the battle. Do you understand? The biggest part of the battle is realizing that you are devaluing yourself in the type of people in the environment that you are accepting. Do you understand what I'm saying? The number seven, the seven of hearts means people, peaceful surroundings, healing, steady improvement, happy surprises, the cycle of life, a second chance, the opportunity to redo something, something that comes in twos, faith, faith. You understand what I'm saying? So again, you are giving yourself a chance to stop fighting for something that ain't worth fighting for no more. If someone don't have time, if someone don't have the space, if they don't have the place to accept you and to love you, it doesn't matter the circumstances. And don't feel bad because you you had the strength to choose yourself. I feel like you gave enough years into this situation. You You had faith in it. And you grew old. And you grew tired. And you grew weary. And you realized, like, I'm a fucking mermaid in a sewer <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you don't fit here you don't belong here and that you're better than that and what you were accepting in the beginning you're rejecting now because you know your worth and you're willing to work hard to get what you deserve you want someone that's going to take action that's going to love you the way and that has time and availability to do it these people don't have time and availability you're tired of watching everybody else find love but you you went to jail. I'm not about to serve this sentence with you. Give me guidance. What does this have to do with? A child. Hmm. A child. Communication. Okay. All right, so I feel like this person is going to try to explain to you their innocence. Their innocence, especially if this person is married. Especially if this person is married and you're sick and you're worried and you're going through this battle and this negotiation feeling like you want to be let out this prison because this person is married and has a child elsewhere and this person is married and has a child elsewhere they're going to try to explain their innocence in this situation it's going to try to explain to you guys how important your their children is in their house is in that if you're going to be in their life you have to recognize that you're going to be second you're going to be second to this and to this family if this person is married you're always going to be second this person is going to tell you that their child comes first okay so again this is something that's going to be communicated 
you guys might meet up for lunch or something like that. And I, for some of you guys, I feel like this is your supervisor. Some of y'all might be sleeping with your supervisor. Okay? Because you are communicating about this. And, you know, this is an area where people can meet to have open dialogue and communication where it ain't going to go haywire. I feel like this is a public place. Like, you guys are discussing this because it's like this person is trying to explain to you like listen i have to focus on number one you're already upset and whoever this is could have threatened to self-harm their self i feel like the person on the receiving end of this conversation might have threatened in the past to do bodily harm to themselves if you left them. So I feel like that's why y'all kind of tread it lightly and are kind of waiting to figure out how to tell this person that you're going to leave them because you don't want this person to kind of threaten to take their life or to do something to harm theirself or like this could be like if I can't have you, can't nobody have you. Like this is like someone with some level of selfish greed like this person has a commitment and a child somewhere else like they could be married this could be your supervisor this one could be in jail who knows you understand what i'm saying but this person feels like they're innocent in this situation and they just want to communicate that they want peace and harmony with you they want peace and harmony with you and they don't want you to feel like you're in prison. They don't want you to feel like that. They're innocent. They just want things to be good. Okay? That's for somebody that's locked up and they don't want you to leave. They feel like they're innocent. And they don't want your curiosity to kill, to kill the cat. You understand what I'm saying? They're like, don't be curious going out there trying to think you're going to get something better when you know I'm getting out of jail. Then when I get out of jail, then you're going to want me back because I'm going to reject you. That's what this person is saying. So the one that's in jail is letting you know, you know I'm going to get out of jail. You've been down with me for this long. If you've been down, you might as well stay down with me. Like, what the fuck are you going to do this shit for? Because I really do feel like if you work with this person in jail, they might try to harm themselves, and I'm sorry. Or they want to threaten to do it at least. Because they might become mentally unstable and they really want to work this out with you and they just want you to try to hold on. And I feel like they might only have like maybe two or three months left or something like that after all this time. Like you're going to leave them like two to three months before they're about to get out. That's crazy. And or you're fucking with your boss. This person has a family and a child elsewhere. They're innocent in this situation because you knew this shit. This person is going to try to come and communicate that to you. Want to tell you that, listen, I just need peace and harmony. So, either you're going to accept this lifestyle or I don't know what to tell you. You're going to tell them, well, I don't accept it. You're taking, you listen, I don't accept it. I don't accept it. I'm going to be the only lady in this situation. If not, to... I'll give you the whip and I can show and here go a fucking child again. Wow. No, this woman is this woman doesn't accept it. This woman wants a relationship where there's mutual feelings and she wants a second chance to love again. And that's why she's walking out on faith. She's tired of getting her ass whooped and you keep telling her about this commitment that she that you got with this other woman and a child. She's tired of being beat down with that. Do you understand? She's tired of feeling like she's come second to this child. Mm -mm. She feels like every time that you say that to her, it's like she's suffering. She's angry. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you keep promising her something and you're never going to give it to her. It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. She wants someone that's going to focus on her or only her. And it's going to work on shit with her or only her. She ain't coming second to nobody. She's rejecting that shit. This person's going to say, you know, I got my child. You know, I got my family. We can only... I feel like y'all can only deal with each other at work. Y'all can only talk to each other at work. 
Because that's the only way that things are going to be peaceful. Because if this other person finds out about you, it's curtains. You know what I'm saying? It's curtains. And I also feel like for the for the Aquarius that has someone locked up, they want to move on because they want children. They want children. They, they want a family. They want a commitment. They want peace. They want harmony. And it's like, I can't get that from, like, you're not able to give me what I need. Do you understand what I'm saying? Patience and planning. Like, I'm going to get this shit together because I need to focus on what I want. And what I want is not in jail. What I want is not somebody else's man or somebody else's woman. That keep complaining to me about their child and their family. Go be with your child and your fucking family. Then I'm this shit is old to me. I'm tired of this shit. Triumph. I will not triumph in this situation with you. Seventh and seven. Yeah. Withdrawing, contemplating, finding understanding, acknowledging this situation for what it is. It's like Aquarius is 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 tired of living in fucking Goonie Goo Goo land, okay? New beginnings. Start from ground zero. Number seven represents withdrawal, okay? Spirituality. Spiritually, in your heart, you know that this shit wasn't going to work. The first two or three times this person started complaining about their family or they got to go to work or blah, 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 or you know I had to go to jail, you knew what you was getting yourself into. Fuck you. You fed me what the fuck you thought I needed to hear to keep me holding on to you. I was never going to triumph in this situation. I might not have knew it, but you knew it. And you just fed me bullshit just to keep me hanging on. That's good. I don't want none of it anymore. I'm walking into new beginnings. Faith. That fool card. That joker card. I believe that I, I can move on into a new world and I'll be okay. I'm tired of being discontent and bored. My place, my heart don't live there no more. It don't live there no more. And I'm not as scared of the truth anymore. For a long time, this Aquarius did not want to see the truth in the situation. But every fucking time that you go and you confront it, you keep getting smacked in your face with the truth. But it's like for some reason, it wasn't registering. You guys just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And I really do feel like, I don't know, if someone just got married. Did someone just get married or someone just had a child? Something just happened that made y'all wake up and just be like, man, I don't, I'm not waiting for this shit no more. Give me clarification. What is this, the Empress? Ooh, or you are pregnant. Aquarius is pregnant. Ooh, shit. Is that why that child kept popping up like that? Oh, my God. Aquarius, are you pregnant? And that's why you're meeting with this person in this garden to tell them that you are fucking pregnant and that you want some commitment because the, the, the lilies can represent like a committed male. You understand what I'm saying? Peace, harmony. You know what I'm saying? The whip, like this woman having to come to this man and, you know, y'all arguing over this burden and it's like you're, obviously, you're suffering knowing that you have this baby and this person isn't offering you with, girl, mm-mm. Yeah, some of y'all are pregnant, right honey. It's y'all with this damn baby. That's why I'm saying patience and planning. I feel like you guys are... Oh, my gracious. That's why you guys are just like... Okay, what's this? This judgment in the reverse. The queen of swords. The five of cups. Oh, my God. Yeah, y'all are suffering from heartbreak. That's like, regrettably... Uh, I feel like some of you guys are like stuck in denial a little bit. You guys are stuck in denial. Give me one more. What is this? The page of coins, yeah. You guys are stuck in denial, okay? It's like you got this baby growing inside of you now. Your emotions are all over the place. Do you see what I'm saying? Your emotions are all over the place. You are beautiful. You're glowing. This situation has grown tired and like I said your sensuality is beautiful at this moment and it's like I'm too beautiful I'm too beautiful to be floating around in this shit it's time for a change of environment because your body is growing in ways that your mind has to catch up with 
right now you are realizing that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to get tangled up with the person that you got tangled up with. You're either pregnant by someone who's in jail or you're pregnant by somebody that is your boss or you're pregnant by someone that's in another marriage or commitment. And you're tired of staying up at night, worrying, stressing, and thinking, is this person going to commit to me? Is this person lying? Like this person is constantly, constantly feeding you bullshit. Like I said, if you're dealing with someone that's in jail, it's like you're sitting there pregnant. Like this person might have got you pregnant right before they went to jail. And it's like every time you talk to this person, this person is feeding you lies. No, I'm coming home, baby. Don't worry about it. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. But you're like the baby is about to be here. Like what's going on? And this person knows good and goddamn well that they ain't coming out of jail no time soon. And they're just telling you fucking lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. You understand what I'm saying? And you're so confused. And or you're dealing with your boss. And your boss is fucking with other co-workers. You feeling like this person is lying. Or your boss has a wife. Or whoever you're fucking with has children and a lifestyle somewhere else. And this person is doing nothing but lying to you. And putting you in a place where you are unsure of what to think. You're unsure of what to believe. You don't know. It's like it's like you just you need to get your you need to get your thoughts straight. You need to get your thoughts straight and it's like you're trying to figure out should you cut this person out and just going about your life or not. And it's just you're confused like you're confused or you were confused because at the end of the day, judgment is is karmic balance It's karmic balance. And I really do feel like a lot of your worry, especially if you were dating someone who is married, I feel like you're heartbroken because this person always has to go back home like this person do you see one two three four cups no three cups are spilled no four cups are spilled and only one is up and you see this river leading to this house you're not a part of that house i feel like whoever you're dealing with is married and has two kids and this person has one child with you that's a secret and you're heartbroken about it. I feel like you guys are pregnant by someone. You guys are, are pregnant by somebody. It's hard to cut this person out. Because I feel like you're pregnant by this person now. It was bad judgment on your part. The, 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 it was bad judgment. It was bad judgment. And now you guys, I feel like you're worried about how you're going to financially take care of this child because they're not going to leave their wife for you or they're not getting out of prison anytime soon to help you with this shit so this is you like possibly getting bad news that whatever you thought was about to happen ain't about to happen so you got to go back to the table and you got to replan your strategy about how you're going to take care of yourself or take care of the situation so it's like it's not good you guys like it's really 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 not good you know let me um love oracle deck real quick give me guidance surrounding this situation with aquarius but regardless you're bored with this situation it's just like you just trying to figure out what the fuck you want to do because now i'm feeling like you're pregnant now i'm feeling like aquarius is motherfucking pregnant and their life is about to go somewhere on a different level and it's like you got this new beginning in your life like you don't really have time to deal with this shit. 777, seven, seven, that's all that's been popping out here on the damn table is 777s. Seven, seven, it says rapid soul development comes from challenging times. You're going through your soul's journey right now through this situation. Dominance. Like, it's like you are not able to assert your dominance. And it's like, it's like some shit is going on that's outside of your damn control in this situation. You cannot assert your dominance. You can't. You don't have the power to do it this time. Only thing you can do is separate yourself. Okay. I got the chilling here. I got the chilling confirmation card. You really can't read that in reverse. 
maybe that is maybe the spirit conf confirming to me that you know what I'm saying like it's someone pregnant it's someone's pregnant by 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 having someone that's locked up and you don't have and you don't have look time is slipping like this baby is coming and this person is not coming out of jail this baby's coming in October November around Halloween around Thanksgiving time Yep, I see that light jumping, the flame jumping. Enthusiasm, excitement, and warmth. And you guys feel like you should be enthusiastic and excited and stuff like that. Yep, I told you. Baby coming in November, October. Yep, spiritual awakening. Yeah. And it says you're on the right path. Like, if you're tired of this situation, you know your, your beliefs, your beliefs and your style and your attitude and the way you're Things is going right now. The shit that you were accepting before, you not accept. I'm not being no side. I'm not being on no side. I have a baby coming. This baby is coming regardless if you like it or not. You're heartbroken about the situation, but you got to do what you got to do because you're the empress. You know what I'm saying? You only have a little bit of fucking time. And this is a confirmation that this situation is out of your control. You can't make this person be or do anything that they don't want to do or they don't want to fucking be. You just can't. Your sexuality is beautiful. You're beautiful. You're better than being a fucking sewer maid. You understand? You're better than being a sewer maid. I think you need to continue. You need to continue to work on yourself. Right here it says that you're on the right path. You're on the right path. And you don't have a lot of time. So... Whatever your train of thought and your thinking is the right thing. Continue to stand up and communicate with this person. Like, look, this baby is coming. Either you going to be with me or you not. Either you going to be with me or you not. I'm not going to stay in this fucking prison. You're not going to keep holding me captive. Because this is someone that's selfish. is just trying to hold you for their own. Ace of Pentacles. This It's not going anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. There's not going to be a strong... It's not going to be a strong commitment. You're going to have to go at this by yourself. The Empress. And it's going to be a financial struggle, man. Because you're going to have to do this by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse and this King of Swords. Yeah, you guys might be dealing with a Gemini, a Gemini Libra or an, um, or an Aquarius male. But I definitely see that this man is grabbing a sword and he's about to cut you out. He's about to cut you out. And it's going to affect your financial stability at home. And I don't want to say that, but I mean, it might be. I mean, you guys might have to lose... You guys might have to downsize a little bit. Because you're not getting the support of this person. You're not getting the support of this person. And you see, like, you're, whatever you're coming to this person and you're telling them, like, you're not being accepting. And you're standing your ground right here with this strength. You're not being accepting of what you were. Listen, a collision in beliefs. You don't believe in that shit no more. What you used to accept. You're not accepting that shit no more. Your belly is growing. Y'all got a child coming in here now. You can't be no secret. And I feel like you're a fucking secret. Even though I don't see the magician card or nothing like that. I want to say I feel like you're a fucking secret. And this person is not trying to give you the commitment. This person is not trying to plan. This person is not trying to put forth the work and the effort that you need for this situation to grow abundantly. You have these kids to worry about. You don't have time. You know what I'm saying? So you might have to downsize and you might have to move and get a smaller apartment or something like that. Something that you can afford. Because this person does not like what you have to say. And this person is cutting you out of the picture. This person is like permanently cutting you out of the picture, y'all. So I don't know if some of you guys are about to be a fucking single mother or something. Especially if y'all were a fucking secret. If y'all's relationship was a secret. You're going to have to go to. You're going to have to go to court. You're going to have to go to court with this person. Because this person just wants you to be the secret. Patience. And they, and they go to goddamn child on this patient card. You being patient. Your child is coming. 
get your your child your your child you're being dark night of the soul you gotta be patient i feel like your child is either going to be delivered this winter or like i said um october november okay you're going through a dark night of the soul and that's fucked up that you're going through this right now and you're experiencing this with a pregnancy what is this yeah you're not getting the recognition that you deserve and intuitively you knew that you weren't I feel like there's a level of regret. Like you should have never got involved with this person to begin with. Yeah. You should have never surrendered your body to this person. You should have never did this. Because I feel like now you're having to raise a child by yourself. And that's just like really, really not cool. And I really don't like that. I really don't like that. Yeah. You want to be by yourself and you don't deserve to be by yourself. You don't want to be alone. Give me a card in love and then we're gone. Give me a card in love. It says life is a series of cons consistently shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow. You will be surprised where it leads you. Okay? So just go with the flow. Don't beat yourself down. You're going to have to go through this dark night of the soul journey because I feel like you kind of got yourself... Mixed up with someone you really shouldn't have got yourself mixed up with, especially if this was your supervisor. It says acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times we must accept things as they are. There's no point of trying to change things that is beyond our control. Like you can't change the situation. You can't change this person. You can't make this person. Um, you can't make this person leave the commitment that they're already in. You understand what I'm saying? So. It's just something that you just need to understand. If y'all created this baby, you might have to go through this pregnancy alone. You might, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you were a secret, you might got to go through this alone. And I know you don't want to, but listen, you guys, you're not saying, you're not giving him the attitude. You're not giving him or he, she's, the whatever. Y'all, you're not giving the attitude and you're not going with the flow of things the way things used to be. That's why the storm is brewing. You are stifled. You are bored. You are not amused anymore by what you have been allowing to transpire. You feel like a sewer maid. I'm not down dirt in the yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You were pulling yourself the fuck up out of this sewer because you were too fucking beautiful for that. And you are not accepting of that shit no more. You guys, y'all let me know if I'm tripping here. Are y'all pregnant? Y'all let me know what's going on. Anyway, Aquarius, this has been your reading. I love you. Um, Y'all email me. And make sure that I ain't fucking tripping. All right, peace. My email is scorpionraise at gmail.com. If y'all want to book a personal private read, and um, the information is in the about tab. Peace. Peace.